We are wrestling. Olympic Hero Kurt Angle, and you're listening to the We Are Wrestling Podcast. We Are Wrestling Podcast. Hey everybody, Eric Bischoff here, and you are listening to We Are Wrestling Podcast. You're watching We Are Wrestling. I'm the host with the most. You are by far the least intelligent. Stay tuned, listen to the podcast. Best one, Donnie, might teach you a thing or two. What is going on, We Are Wrestling Maniacs Worldwide? Ben here, one half of the We Are Wrestling Podcast. If you ain't listening to the We Are Wrestling Podcast, bro, you're missing out. The king listens, and you need to, too, bro. Ricky knows best, ladies and gentlemen. Ricky knows best. Believe in me. God bless you. We Are Wrestling Podcast. We, we are wrestling. What is up? We are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide. I'm the host with the most, Mr. We Are Wrestling himself, the best one Donnie here with... Uh, Ricky Williams, a.k.a. Ricky Knows Best, a.k.a. the co-host with the most. We are Wrestling Nation, let's get it. So guys, we have a very jam-packed episode for you guys this week. New episode is out on a Friday instead of a Saturday because We Are Wrestling will be doing a live watch along on Saturday for WWE Backlash in France. I will not be a part of the live watch along, but the Load Rager Ben will be making his return to We Are Wrestling during that watch along. But before we get into all the good topics for this week, if you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already, and you're listening to this week's episode, give us a five-star review, not just any review, a best one review, and download the episode. But if you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already over on the YouTube channel, where you get the best pro wrestling content, and you're not a part of the thousands of subscribers we recommend you to hit that subscribe button now turn on the post notifications videos be coming out of nowhere like an RKO and of course you already know the grind is real so Ricky how is your week been week's been good been been a little back and forth but my week's been extremely well can't complain it's always blessed to see another day, too. Yes, sir. Rise and shine. Give God the glory. So, every week, highlight of the week. Ricky, what's got to be your highlight of the week in the wrestling world this week? Um, the obvious. Uh, <laughs> the Omega and Elite segment that ended Dynamite last night got it from me. But the second one, like the debatable one is... The Swerve and Christian Cage segment as well. So it's literally debatable, but if I had to pick one, I'm going to pick the um, the Omega Elite. Gave me a little teases and a little old school, years ago, New Japan aura of Okada and Omega. But like I told Donnie here, until they're both 100%, I don't want them engaging unless storyline-wise. I don't want them in no rings, period. Storyline-wise, I love it, but in ring, no. I respect that, and I think realistically we're going to be getting Omega versus Okada at All In. I think that's going to be enough time for Kenny Omega to get Hopefully. to 150%. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. like This match cannot happen, because I've seen the first, the last four. This match cannot happen unless they both are under. I'm sorry. I respect that, and... We will be talking about that in particular in our main event topic for this week. So, I have to pick something for my highlight of the week. I'm going to have to go with Friday Night Smackdown last Friday. Carmelo Hayes getting picked number two on the Smackdown brand. Literally the only thing I actually enjoyed with the WWE draft was Carmelo getting picked at number two. I think them putting him in the ring against Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, was a great way to make him a star. 
in the process. Because I feel like you don't need to win every match to become a star. I think putting him against the top guy right now in WWE, that is a great way to get eyes on him. And I think they did a great job with the introduction. And just overall, it was a surprise I didn't expect. I knew he was going to get drafted, but not number two on the SmackDown brand. I, Loved it. I didn't... I didn't expect I didn't expect him to be that high. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like sometimes the newer guys, the NXT guys, I'm feeling like they gotta make their bones a little bit like they gotta start from the bottom bottom. Not all the way in the bottom, but like you gotta make your mark. Like put them in a even a mid card feud, but it's high profile, you get what I'm saying? I didn't expect Carmelo Hayes to get that high. But then I told people years ago Carmelo Hayes was gonna be one of those guys soon too. I did I did mention that. And look at now that he's here, y'all see what I'm about to talk about now. And that's the thing, like, even myself, when I went to Northeast Wrestling, I saw I saw Christian Casanova, that's Carmelo Hayes' indie name, for the very first time. It was back in Poughkeepsie, New York, November 2018, when I got the opportunity to meet Kenny Omega. Christian Casanova was in a ladder match, and he really stood out to me. And I knew that one day, this guy was going to be a star in either AEW or WWE. And when they made the announcement that Carmelo Hayes signed with WWE, I knew instantly that there was going to be big plans for this kid. I've seen the potential, and I think the sky is the limit for him. And obviously we know WWE has big plans for him and Braun Breaker because when NXT competed against AEW for that special Tuesday Night War thing we got, that whole episode of NXT, they really set up Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes for big, big things. Doing stuff with John Cena, Paul Heyman, Undertaker. Really big names in this business and I think that Carmelo Hayes, man, he's going to be a future world champion in WWE. A lot, of people don't, a lot of people don't realize it, but Adam, I mean, Carmelo Hayes' real first introduction was when Adam Cole called him out. And then, um, well, he accepted the open challenge from Adam Cole. And um, he used the John Cena reference metaphor, ruthless aggression. That was his welcome in the WWE for me. If I'm being frank with you. Yeah, him and Adam Cole, they did a really cool moment there, passing the torch with NXT. I don't think people remember that, though. Like, I think people, they do remember, but I think like if you ask them about it... It doesn't get talked about a lot, exactly. I feel like, in the wrestling community. Exactly. But it's something I feel like a lot of people are going to talk about years from now. Yeah. And maybe the reason why they don't talk about it as much is because Adam Cole isn't with WWE anymore. Mm -hmm. He's with AEW. Yeah. I think if Adam Cole was with WWE still... I think that it would be talked about a lot more. But Mello, he is a future Hall of Famer, I think. And it's only a matter of time before he does big things. So I loved him getting picked number two on the SmackDown brand. That is how you create new superstars. So, with that being said, let's get into the We Are Wrestling weekly recap for the We Are Wrestling podcast, episode 102. Six. So, starting things off, we got some NXT call-ups during the WWE Draft. Here's the full breakdown. Over on the SmackDown brand, Carmelo Hayes, Blair Davenport, and Baron Corbin were selected for the blue brand. And over on Monday Night Raw, Elio Dragunov, Lyra... What's her... You, What's her last I name? Even, I can't even announce it. All right, you can't either. All right, so we got Lila, we got Lyra, Braun Breaker, Dijak, and Kiana James. So, with these NXT call ups, what's your overall thoughts on some of these pickups? My overall grade on it, first and foremost, was probably, I'm not going to lie, it's probably a B. And then the one standing out to me, Braun Breaker, obviously. Um, Braun Breaker, uh, who else? Braun Breaker, who else did you say? Ilya. Ilya is definitely. I'm telling you about Ilya right now. You might not like the guy, but he's about to be something special. I am you. the only one that doesn't like him, and I will not deny that he's a talented wrestler in the ring. I will not take that away from him. 
But I still stand by what I said. I understand why people are fans of him. So I'm not here to judge. So please don't judge me. Bear. Because I'm not judging you. <laughs> Baron Corbin, um, this is like his third, second or third time getting called back up. And Baron Corbin's running the NXT. Arguably, he's been his best work since... Um, Lone Wolf. Yep. It's been his best work so far. Even teaming him up with Braun Breaker as a tag team champion, that wasn't a bad idea. Yeah, there's that a lot of people There's a lot of people that actually weren't happy with that, having them on separate brands. But I think Braun Breaker doesn't need to be in a tag team on the main roster. Mm -hmm. They need to be giving this man a singles push. They need to put a rocket on him and let him like take off to the moon. I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad if he won the Intercontinental Championship later this year. I wouldn't, I be, wouldn't mad. be mad either. And Baron Corbin, back to Corbin too, though, like. I think this is going to be his best run on the main roster because he's been getting jumped back and forth. Corbin did some of his best work uh, back in, I think it was 2017, when he was the general manager. He took over Kurt Angle for a minute. Kurt Angle, that was, that was yeah. some of his best work, but oh, Corbin... Oh, not that. No, no. I think so. No, no, no. I think this, this could Lone be Corbin... Wolf was his best work. This could be this could be Corbin's best run on the main roster, though. So I agree. I think he I think he's gonna have his breakout moment this year in the main roster. Blair, and, um, what's the other lady's Blair, name? Blair um, Devonport. Blair Devonport. Uh, I would start her at the bottom, like work her way up a little bit. I see potential there, but then I'm like. You gotta see what she does in the main roster because you got all eyes on you now. Can like I a, can I ask you something about Blair? Hmm. Did you know that she dated Will Ospreay? I just learned that this week when she I got did. drafted. I didn't know that. You did know that? I didn't know that. I was I'm very surprised about that. I, I never had brought no it idea. Up. I never brought it up to my attention because you never asked me about it. <laughs> I just learned it this week. No. I, I just thought to bring it up. No, I've been I, I've been known that, but like there's all eyes on her like a Tupac album, so she gotta show us something here, like Nobody's down. I'm not down their abilities, but you're gonna have more eyes on you than expected. So, the sky's the limit, and let's see if you do it. What's the other one's name? So I, I do want to ask you now about the next one you do want to talk about, and that's Lyra. Lyra, I can't say her name. Ly Lyra. Pardon us if we get the names wrong, as we can't announce names right. Like we're not disrespecting the wrestlers. Guys, I have ADD and a learning disability. So, I have trouble pronouncing certain things. Oh, we all do. No, we, no, we all do. <laughs> we all do. It's but not... I don't really pay attention to certain people in NXT. And I got to ask you, Ricky, what's your thoughts on her? Because I have not really watched any of her work, even when Becky Lynch was over there and she won the championship against her. I think she's going to I got get... a lot of researching I got to do. I think she's going to get lost in the shuffle a little bit. I think she might get lost in the shuffle, but... It's literally a hit and miss, too. So, like a low risk, high reward type of situation. Yeah, it it depends on how you um it depends on how she gets booked, cause the right storylines, and when she's involved in them, you'll see the difference of what I'm talking about. You'll see like put her with a Becky Lynch. Of course, Becky Lynch is gonna have the star power, but like the wrestling side, she has that, but she doesn't have the the star power. Becky Lynch has both, as much as it. To say that, Becky Lynch has both, but it just depends on the storyline, too. So. Definitely. I think a lot of the times, like, it does have to do it's with the storyline. It is a hit or miss. You don't want to hit You don't want to hit something, or you don't want to hit a home run, and when you get there, then you got the other one trying to hit a home run, and it, and it doesn't work out. Somebody catches the ball, and then you see where it's going. It's not going to work like that. So what about Kiana James? Your thoughts on her getting called up? Because that was somebody that I really didn't have on my list of people getting called up. Oh, that's a future women's world, future women's champion for me. Because I have seen some of her work, and I think she's pretty good. She's got potential. She got a future women's champion for me. I think, I, I think them calling her up was a big, a good idea. She's got future world champion, women's champion all over. Her. It's just she, she got to put the piece together too, because like I said, NXT. And the main roster are two different things now. Like NXT is a lot more easier for certain certain people. It's when for more diehard yep. um, professional it, wrestling fans. Yeah, but like I said, if you get to that main stage, they start booing or they think you're not nice. They're gonna smell blood and they're gonna like they're gonna turn on you very quick. Man. Definitely, and that's the thing. But I like her though. She got potential. She definitely does have potential. But one of the names that really stands out to me 
that I'm excited about. And obviously, we know his contract is coming up pretty soon with WWE, and they haven't they haven't come to terms just yet, and that's Dijak. That was one of the names that really stood out to me because after Monday Night Raw, he got drafted to the Raw brand. And he's somebody that I've had my eyes on going all the way back to Ring of Honor and the independent circuit during his time where he was feuding with Cody Rhodes in the New England area. I was paying attention to what they were doing, and I even got to watch them wrestle at Blitzkrieg Pro back in 2017. Such a great match. I've been a huge fan of Dijak. I feel like... He has had the potential to be something big in the WWE, but they just haven't done anything with him. I love the series of matches they had with Black and Gold, him versus Keith Lee. Those were great. And then, of course, Retribution. Let's not talk about that. And then they brought him back to NXT, and he has this like big boss man gimmick that he's doing, which I think could work in the main roster if it's done properly, if it's done right. I just think that Dijak, he has so much potential to be a mid-card champion, and I hope this time around they don't fumble the bag with him. Because I think realistically, he's not going to re-sign with WWE unless they got plans for him, because I know how frustrated he is with the lack of creative behind him, and he's not the type of guy that wants to sit on the sidelines. I can tell you guys that firsthand knowing this man. He is passionate about what he does. He'd rather be in that ring doing something than sitting at catering. Which is why he probably decided that he wanted to go back to NXT to really just re restart his run with WWE because the retribution thing didn't work, obviously. It ain't. It, it, but in a sense, if you've been paying attention to him, like you said, him going back and forth, he ain't, really, he ain't been doing nothing really neither, though. He's been in some good fields and stuff, but he hasn't had no real and success And I blame either. WWE creative for that because he is so freaking talented. They should be freaking pushing this man like they are with Damian Priest right now. Yeah, but sometimes, like, it's, it's kind of hard to do that sometimes, too, because, like, as talented as you are, look, remember Cesaro? Yep. He had all the potential. Gladio Casanova. He had literally, yep, he literally had everything. And they didn't give him a push for unknown reasons. I see that. That's what I see in um, Dijak. Like, and I'll tell you this right now: if Dijak does leave WWE tomorrow, he is going to fucking kill it on the independent circuit. He is somebody that you. I think every We Are Wrestling maniac needs to keep their eyes on because he's somebody that I think if AEW brings him in, if TNA brings him in, if he goes to New Japan, or if he decides to go the Matt Cardona route and just kill it on the independent circuit. He is going to start getting his name tossed around. I think you lot. should go to um you might you might grab my neck for this one, no diddy. I think you should go to Major League Wrestling or NWA. I like that actually. I really like that because they, they do need a star like that in their promotion and I think he's somebody I could definitely see him holding the ten pounds of gold. That's I think a really underrated take, Ricky. TNA, I gotta give you that. TNA would TNA would be my third pick. Dude, Dijak versus Hammerstone. That TNA got match. a lot of talent over there. They it's do. It's just like Scott Demore not being over there kind of messed things up now because now we done a TNA fan since day one like myself. I done lost so much hope now. I don't know what's happening over there. So when guys start getting released and stuff, I got questions that need to be asked because I'm like, with Scott Demore going now, what's going on over here? Guys are getting the Motor City Machine Guns are leaving. I thought they were going to stay until literally they were done. Like Especially with TNA now finally picking up that yeah, momentum. And they're, and, and, and they're literally the best. Like, they're OGs of TNA, and they're leaving to arguably AEW, correct? Yep. Like, what's the issue over there? I'd rather them stay in TNA, bro. I'm sorry. Like, that's yeah. what threw me mm -hmm. off, and that's what got me mad. But, like I said, Dijak and Major League or NWA. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be totally against that at all. He'd be world champion over there. So now I'm looking at these other names here, and one person that also does stand out to me as well has got to be Baron Corbin. I know you talked about him a little bit, but I want to talk about him. And I think his last run in NXT, going back there, was definitely the best decision for him because obviously Vince McMahon pretty much oh. gave him a... Oh. 
really effed up gimmick with the whole Happy Corbin thing, Depressed Corbin. It was pathetic. And the whole GM thing I thought was pathetic as well. I, I like that. I don't Wolf know. Corbin like was it. the best. And I think him going back to NXT, pretty much mashing everything he's learned throughout his run so far all together has definitely been the best decision. And I think that Corbin definitely is somebody that they really need to keep him around because he's great at getting people over. He's a perfect person to have feud with somebody that you want to put over because a lot of the times when somebody wins a championship right away, they want to throw him immediately to the pack of wolves and you want to get those big matchups. But if you want to build up the resume of a champion, having a guy like Corbin is a perfect PLE feud. Yeah, I know. Because Corbin is established in WWE. Mm -hmm. He was the one that had the retirement match with Kurt Angle. He has had a lot of moments with WWE, winning the money in the bank. He He's already an established guy, so you need that to get these new people over. So my, I hope that they actually don't screw this up with my him. My thing with Corbin, too, he should have won the NXT title once he went back. And that's think, the thing I want to say, too, about Corbin real quick. I think if this doesn't work out on SmackDown, I think Corbin could definitely be one of those names that could be on the batches of releases coming up. And I think this is Corbin's last chance to really show what he can do because he's been in the WWE now for 10 years, which is crazy. That's crazy. Like, like you said, I don't think... I don't think they're gonna know what to do with him, but like th he, this could be his best. This could be his best run in the main roster. I think he, like you said, he didn't learn everything he needs to learn, but this could be his breakout moment right here. This is put up or shut up for Corbin right now. So, and if this doesn't work, he's gonna get released. I'm sorry to say, look, like this guy is this guy is world championship material. So, and y'all messed that up this time around. And I don't even know anymore. Like, why would you have him win the money in the bank if he wasn't going to cash it in? Well, obviously, he wasn't going to cash it in successfully. Because gender was kind of on fire at that moment. I, I, that's the only time I would admit that on this channel. Gender was kind of getting heat at the time. I told him off camera I would never admit that. But Corbin, this is his last chance, too. And I'm praying for him to do good. Because why send him back to NXT and then bring him right back up? Yeah, no, I definitely have to I'm agree with for that. Him, like, I'm really praying for him to do good. But I think overall, though, the pick, the pickups that they picked in the main roster were definitely good decisions. I wish that we had a little bit more stuff happen with NXT because I did love the scene that they, the scenery that they had. So when these names were getting called up, they would get the hat. I really like that. I wish that we were able to hear from them a little bit more. I wish maybe we had we had a. Especially SmackDown, I wish that we had more than just Mello getting called in the draft and then Kiana James. I wish that we had a little bit more. And especially overall with the draft, I wish that we had more changes. Everything was just, like, what was the point of the draft? They want to build hype around it, get views and ratings off of it. And they know wrestling fans are going to watch, even the casual fans are going to jump in and see what's up. They're, they think The Rock is going to be there or something like that. So, you know, the casuals were going to jump their heads in there to see it. But all the real wrestling fans, we knew what was going on. We just did not a draft would be this terrible. I said this during my live watch-alongs, which I do appreciate all the maniacs that joined me for those. Had a good time with you. Didn't enjoy the draft, though. But here's what I said overall about the WWE draft. The reason why I think I got myself too excited for it is because... Outside of professional wrestling, I am a huge sports fan. I love basketball. I love football. And one of the things I always look forward to every year is the NFL, the NBA draft. So I get very excited during that time because I pay attention to the prospects. And I just see the potential of it working. Back in the day, WWE was able to make the draft work. And it felt important. Which I think they did a good job making it feel important, but they should have definitely had some big names move around a little bit. Like, the reason why 2005 draft will always be, I think, the best WWE draft of all time is because we got John Cena over on Raw, we got Batista on SmackDown. And that was huge during its time. I don't think I have a, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think I have a favorite draft because at the end of the day, I do want to see guys 
get switched around, but like the draft sometimes, it's unpredictable for me. Because like this draft, the ones previous could have been the same way too though. We just wouldn't know about it because we don't know the behind the scenes. We thing. should have had Bloodline on Raw. We really should have had the Bloodline get called at Raw. Yeah, but like if if Reigns, Reigns probably going to stick to SmackDown, so that's why they probably left. Yeah, but then like the scenario now with Jay is out of the equation because Jay got picked number one to the Raw brand. Jay's a future world champion too, by the way. I don't know when. But Jay's going to get that strap. Oh, dude, Jay is that better than Jimmy. Everybody knows that. No, no, no question. That's like the Briscoes. Like, who was better between the Briscoes? Obviously, Jay. Jay's but better then, than Mark, definitely. Yeah, but then you go back a little bit, Mark is like, Mark was all right, too. Though. Rest in peace, Jay Briscoe, by the way. Rest in peace. But moving on now yeah. to our next We Are Wrestling weekly recap. This past Monday on Raw, we saw the return of... Of the monster among men, Braun Strowman. What's your thoughts on him coming back? They made they made Braun Strowman look strong in his return. Um, I was I was loving it every single moment, and then um, I don't I don't sense the same intimidation factor that he had when he first started. But like, you got a monster, you got a big show type of giant. I wouldn't say he's a giant anymore because he lost a lot of weight. But you got an intimidating, shredded. You got an intimidating guy like Braun Strowman in the back, still screaming, "You're gonna get these hands, or I'm not finished with you." Everything is still there for Braun Strowman, but um, I think um, when the Wyatt Six, I heard there's a rumor about the Wyatt Six gonna start. I think he'll be involved in that. I hope he's involved with it. That's like the one thing that. I didn't like about Braun Strowman returning now. I wish they waited for Wyatt Six. But I understand he's very over and it is like a fresh like it's like fresh air having him come back because even the reaction was very strong with him coming back and I really didn't expect it to happen. I thought we were there waiting until Uncle Howdy, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. I really hope, especially I know we're gonna be talking about Eric Rollin later on in the show. I hope that they pair the two up and they can become tag champs. It's going to feel weird not seeing Luke Harper anymore or Bray Wyatt anymore. Like, the new Wyatt, the Wyatt 6 can work, but, like, the OG members not being there, it's not going to have that same aura to me. Like, it's going to be there, but then you're going to be like this. I can't see it the same no more. But it's going to be good, though. It's going to be good. But it's like, without Bray and Luke, you're like this. Uh, I can't see it the same no more like I used to see. You know what I'm saying? Like we're just, just gonna a, we're just gonna have to wait and see. And I'm very excited the, to see what's gonna happen. Timing, I've been seeing all the QR codes happening. I like what they're doing there. I think the timing. Um, I think they should officially start it because you remember the Wyatt family like ten years ago. It was SummerSlam. They Slam. started. They started right. at SummerSlam. So eleven years later at this SummerSlam, it makes sense. Definitely. An eleven year gap. But especially with how long Braun Strowman was like out of action as well, I'm happy that he's back as well because I'm He's had just, health issues too. Braun's had health issues. That's why he's been around a way too long. People don't know that. Braun Strowman has had health issues, so you can't jack them you can't knock the man for having health issues. Y'all want him to come back and just And thank God like this right as of like for right now, he's gonna be having a singles run. Because I know last time, before he got written off of TV due to injury, he was teaming with Ricochet, which it was, a fun, it was a fun tag team, but turn Braun right Strowman there. is better off as a singles guy, unless like you're going to do something with Wyatt Six, which I think they're eventually going to do something. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Could have turned heel with Ricochet, though, too. That could have been a good uh, angle. I don't, I don't know. They were just random. Like I know it was a, fu it was a fun tag team, but... Ricochet is better off as a singles shout out guy. Rico shout out to Ricochet for being speed champion. <laughs> that thing is stupid. I'm sorry. It is. I uh, just want to say the I'm speed championship. I know. Congratulations to him. But I will say one thing about the speed championship before we move on to our next recap. The speed championship should not be three-minute matches. They should be five-minute matches. Because it would be a little bit more somewhat realistic. Probably. I'm not going to lie. You're probably going to think. Because this is the wrestling side of me. I say 20 minutes. <laughs> That's that is that's a, such a fast match, Ricky. Twenty minutes of them in the ring. <laughs> I'll take a twenty-minute match, a speed match. Like, 
I'll take that type of match with the speed title. I'm sorry. Yeah, I like to watch. I like to watch wrestling. I don't need no three minute matches, man. I'm sorry. F Unless five it's a minutes, but five minutes isn't too long, and they have enough time to actually make it work. Because if you're playing WWE 2K, for example, are you beating somebody in three minutes? No, depends on who you picking. I'm not gonna hold you. <laughs> it depends on who you pick. I'm not gonna hold you. <laughs> if you pick like a Brock Lesnar versus a Kira Tozawa, yeah. I don't know. I think Akira Zizella, he can last at least five minutes. <laughs> but moving on now to our next weekly recap. This past Tuesday on NXT, Wes Lee made his return from injury. What's your thoughts on him coming back? I see him being the next North American champion, and I think we might see a new character in Wes Lee. Like, Wes Lee's always been, he was one of my favorite NXT wrestlers where he got hurt anyway, so I, I'm, I'm expecting a a character change. And, I loved um, his work with the Rascals in TNA. Yep, and then um, he might be the next uh, North American champ. I see him dethroning um, Uba for the NXT North American Uba. Championship. That's the champion, Uba? Yeah. <laughs> That's somebody I have never watched yet. <laughs> uh, the man is... The, the man is, is, he, uh, is, he, is he worth watching? Yeah. Definitely gonna have. He's to, very uh, good. Like, I gotta, I gotta start watching it. He's very good guys. in the ring, like. I'm so bad. I can like, only pay attention to the people I'm not gonna that I'm, 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 I'm not gonna make it make you look like I'm selling you a car or something because I ain't gonna ask you to buy it if you don't want it either. Though. Unless but WWE's no, paying you, then. No, no, but he's um, <laughs> he's very good in the ring, underrated, a big man, and he's convincing. Like he's like he's like a I wouldn't say like. Didn't they tease him in Trick this past Tuesday? They had them, like, walk past each other or something. Yeah. I saw something about that. Yep. But I got to say, it's awesome to see Wesley come back. I know he was devastated when he had to give up his North American championship due to injury. And I'm very excited to see where things go with him coming back. But I will say I really miss I miss his tag team with Zachary Wentz. I miss them together. Uh. Because that was some bullshit what happened with um, Zachary Wentz. Mm -hmm. Didn't even have evidence, and he got released over that. But that's a whole another topic for another day. At least he's killing it in Impact right now with Trey Mitchell. But moving on now to our last We Are Wrestling Weekly recap for this week. Wednesday on AEW Dynamite, Christian Cage was announced as the next opponent for Swerve Strickland's AEW World Heavyweight Championship at Double or Nothing. What's your thoughts on Christian being next in line for a title shot? I love it. And then um, there's history there. Uh, I don't know if people remember Swerve beat up Nick Wayne. Loved it. During the Darby Allen, during the Darby Allen feud. And then... Um, in his home. And then um, Christian Cage has a right to blame Swerve for losing that tag team casket match. At, um, I think it was all in. Yep. Long-term storytelling right and here. There's so much of a long-term storytelling. And now... That Swerve is extremely over in the top face of the company, and Christian literally, arguably, is the top heel. He's top three at least. Yep, definitely agree with you on that. He's top three heel in um, AEW, so why not put the top face and champion, the logo, the Jerry West of AEW versus Christian Cage, aka Father of the Year? Why don't you, when elements combine like that, magic happens, ladies and gentlemen. This is a perfect first rivalry for Swerve going into this World Heavyweight Championship run. I loved how everything in this segment made logical sense. I love that we're keeping the overall storyline throughout this episode of Dynamite with the Young Bucks. I think they did a great job there. And especially having them involved saying, oh, we didn't like that you were talking crap about your boss. And they pretty much had Christian get announced as his opponent, which I really liked. We haven't seen him since losing the title to Adam Copeland. And it's honestly refreshing because I think Christian and Swerve, they definitely are going to create some magic throughout this thing. And I think AEW, one thing that they are doing right now, ever since they showed this all-in footage, which I can't believe, I, like, I think it was a great decision, them doing that. I think that... Showing that One of the things punk. that they got criticized for was lack of storylines and just random matches, but we're actually getting storylines on this program, finally! 
This is what I've been waiting for. This is what I've been asking for. And it's crazy because everybody looked at me funny when I said, oh, the EVPs, they have potential. This character can work for them. And now people are actually invested in AEW Dynamite, which is great for wrestling as a whole. But Christian going against Swerve, I'm very excited to see where the storyline goes. I think they did a great job this past Wednesday setting it up. And it's going to get interesting. It's going to get dark, too. Because, you know, Swerve's got that dark side of him. And, especially with Christian having that feud, Ricky, um, what do you call it? We can get a Swerve versus Nick Wayne match because of the feud that they had going all the way back to when he invaded his home. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of scenarios here that really has me excited going into this first feud. Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, I can see it. Like I said, and Christian Cage has made his bones too as um a heel. Like it's not it's it's very hard to get real heel heat nowadays in the business because a lot of the heels are like. But Christian Cage, he makes being a heel look so easy. Like why not? Like I said, why not put him and the top guy together like that? And then um Christian Cage, he made that TNT Championship relevant, and he can make the world title relevant without actually being the champ if that makes any sense definitely makes sense and i think this is a great first feud and honestly i wouldn't mind this going past double or nothing but i think that this is definitely great i think the next couple weeks we're gonna get some interesting stuff but guys up next we have our comet of the week and of course the we are wrestling weekly news and rumors We'll be right back with more We Are Wrestling Podcast episode 106. Hello, this is Eric Redbeard, and you're listening to We Are Wrestling Podcast. We're back, and before we get into the comment of the week, we do want to let all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs know that tomorrow, Ben will be live for WWE Backlash. We're going to be doing a live watch along. Unfortunately, Ricky and I will not be a part of it. Oh, it's Friday? I thought it was Saturday. Well, this is this is cave this is kayfabe. Like this is going to go up on Friday, so tomorrow technically oh. for them it's Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, my bad, my bad, my bad. Nah, my, you're good, my, man, my but we won't be a part of the live watch along, but Ben will be making his return to We Are Wrestling for it, so if you guys are looking for somebody to watch Backlash with, Ben is your guy. Also, May 10th, next Friday, We Are Wrestling will be at Blitzkrieg Pro at the Pierogi Hall in Enfield, Connecticut. Be there. Be there at B-Square. If you're not around the Western Mass area, highly recommend you guys download IWTV, where you get a lot of awesome independent wrestling over there, and it will be streaming live. So if you guys want to watch a really stacked show, highly recommend it. We're going to be sponsoring the Cruel vs. Bronson match, that's and gonna it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a fire match. As long as uh, as long as they don't throw a chair at me, I'm straight. But these Blitzkrieg events, yo, when I went to my first one, was a fan right after that. Like, Blitzkrieg's my favorite independent wrestling. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to stand there and lie to you. It's my favorite. That, Creative Pro, and um, Northeast. Oh, those three. are the best three. There's no doubt about that in my mind. But every week we do this thing called the Comet of the Week. If you want to get your comet featured on a future episode of the We Are Wrestling Podcast, all you got to do is just leave a comment. Don't worry, guys. Ben will be back next week. He'll be reading the comments. But this week, the winner is at... Whoa, this is a very long username. So if I get this wrong, I do apologize. At... Doe's of Reality 420, Marietti 2, and they commented this. First time hearing this channel, but I have to say that I like your enthusiasm for AEW. I am sick of all the grievers in the wrestling journalism and podcasting who never got a nice thing to say about wrestling. Right now, AEW is highly successful and doing exciting things, and the industry itself is booming. Unless you only see WWE casually, you should know this. 
Anyhow, personally, I don't know if I believe that Tony Khan showed the footage of the fight without CM Punk's consent. I truly believe that both parties know that it was going to be controversial, which gener generates buzz. On top of that, I don't know if there really was a fight. I'm not saying there wasn't, but I think about it this way. CM Punk and the people in AEW are professionals, professionally, and for whatever reason, Punk wanted to get out of his contract. Why not con consent a fake fight? Get it on CT CCT cam, use it to make a storyline that you can run even after Punk's departure. Wrestlers are actors, and they are explode, exploding kayfabe to a higher level than people are used to nowadays. Whoo! What a long comment that was. I think your comment was longer than your username. Ricky, what was your thoughts on that comment? Um, I agree with all of it. I agree with all of it. Um, and then um, wrestling fans only watch and run product. It's crazy to me. Don't talk about a wrestling promotion if you've never watched it. Like, or don't try and downplay a wrestling promotion just to do it, or just because everybody else is doing it, man. Like, those are the type of people I try to stay away from when it comes to wrestling. Like, or I don't like to talk about wrestling with those guys. I like, always say, develop your own opinion. Exactly. Like, if you're not watching the product, don't bother me. Like, like I, under I understand. I always say this. Like, sorry for interrupting, but Dave Meltzer's five star. I respect the business side of it, but the thing I don't like about it is so many people, they have their opinion set because of one man's rating system. Go out there and create your own five-star rating when it comes to what you like because we all see professional wrestling from a different lens, mm -hmm. and that's what makes this art so awesome to be a fan of. Mm -hmm. Because he's missed a lot. Going to Dave Meltzer, he missed a lot of five star matches. I'm not gonna say none right now because we done talked about that millions of times already. But there's a lot of matches that didn't get five stars. That should have. That should have got five stars to me. Like he mentioned the other day, Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 21, arguably in his opinion, the greatest, greatest match, match of all ever. time. Yep. Like maybe I agree with you somewhat, but yeah, but we all see it from a different lens. Mm -hmm. But you do see where I'm coming from, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Like, I do agree with the first paragraph that he wrote about how a lot of these wrestling journalists, they're just all shitting on AEW for They're just views. doing it to do it. They're just, they're just doing, doing it, it, it because it's the cool thing to do now. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I love about We Are Wrestling is that we are the outsiders. We don't, we don't care what other people think about what they're watching because we have our own opinions and then we go on this podcast and we discuss it because not everybody here on we are wrestling loves aew myself and ricky we love wrestling as a whole ben he is a huge wwe fan he's not the biggest aew fan he's tried but he's still hoping that they do well and even one of my like, even Cam, he loves the WWE, and he tries to like AEW, but he's just not a big fan of it. And then Phil, he's old school. He likes the old school stuff. Even not, he, he's, a w, he's a WWE guy these days. But what I'm trying to say is we all have our own opinions when it comes to it. I just think that a lot of these wrestling journalists, they're just doing it for clicks. They want to be cool. And that's why, like, even, like, Eric Bischoff, somebody that I love and respect in this business, he's even going a little overboard now with his AEW takes. And you can just see it, that he's trying to get more AEW haters on his podcast watching it. Which is, you know, I respect the business side of that because, of course, you're talking about AEW in a negative light, so you want to bring those fans over to your podcast. Totally understand it from a business side, but at the same time, like, I want these wrestling journalists that talk shit about AEW, even Jim Cornette, somebody I love and respect, and I listen to his podcast all the time. I want them to say at least one good thing about AEW. I do know this about Cornette. There's a lot of people in the IWC. No, actually, not even wrestling journalists. In the IWC... If you're not a fan of AEW, 
and you're watching or listening to this. Don't watch it. Comment one nice thing you could say about AEW. I bet you can't do that. And that's the people I respect is that even if you don't like something and you can actually put your personal differences aside and you can answer, if you can say some good things about something, I respect that a lot. But I will say this, though. I don't think that this was kayfabe because if this was kayfabe, the whole all-in thing was fake. CM Punk... Would still be there. He would still be there. He would still be there. They would make a storyline out of it, and they would make money. Obviously, we know it was all real, which is why at first, like, it really gave me, like, a weird taste in my mouth when they showed that. Because I didn't think it would benefit anything, but through time, it's, it's the only person... Or actually, the only two people I think it's really benefited throughout this entire thing wasn't AEW at all. It was CM Punk, because now he is the hero in this situation, and the scapegoat Jack Perry. Because this man literally went from getting lost in the shuffle to a legitimate superstar, in my opinion. Because what he is doing now, compared to what he was doing with Hook for the FTW Championship, this is a new side that I am so invested in with him. Wow, I just ranted for like five minutes straight. Nah, it can be, um, I got, uh... They gotta be careful with um, a Jack Perry thing too. Like, I don't want it to get lost in the shovel either. Cause you're gonna have you're gonna have one good thing going about the feud and all the heat you're getting. The next moment, it can all turn into the whispers. After that. Exactly, and I think them showing the footage definitely really set him up for success. Definitely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be angry if he um, if he won the world title either. I really wouldn't be this mad. Version, I can't believe I'm saying this that. version at least. I yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, Jungle Boy is champion. That wouldn't work. But this side of Jack Perry definitely can work. And then but, I do see him with a uh, him and Kenny Omega feud. I do see that going down. Um, realistically, if he ever turns face and joins away from the Elite, which I doubt right now, uh, a Jack Perry and Okada feud was that's a money move right there to me. That's a money move. Definitely. Everything else Kyle has learned from the elite since coming over to AEW and back and using it to backfire on the young bucks, that can really work for them. And that's the thing, just overall I will say I wish more wrestling journalists out there could talk about AEW more in a positive light. Like I'm not saying the fans too. The fans too. The fans as well, you you're right. But at the end of the day, the wrestling journalists, they're out here putting themselves out there. And then the fans look at that and they try to copy it. But here's the thing too. Hold so up. they're the ones that are setting a bad example. But here's the thing that my bad to cut you off. If you don't watch AEW, we can't talk at all. If you don't watch New Japan, I can't talk to you at all. If you don't watch TNA... I, 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 I don't watch New Japan. That's different though. Like, but you understand. <laughs> but I respect but, New Japan and no, what but they you do. Get, no, no, no. But hold up. But you get like... You get it, though. Like, you don't bash the product, though. Like, no, absolutely not. You're a fan of wrestling. You just don't have the time to watch it. That's the only difference. Exactly. Donnie, don't, Donnie doesn't watch New Japan like I do. But at the same time, when he finds out stories or something on the line, he doesn't bash New Japan. He'll tell me his opinion, respect it, or he'll be like, oh, oh I can't do it right now. I'm going to get lost in the shuffle. Me, whenever I watch a New Japan event, I'm going to tell you about it. Whenever I can, I'm going to tell and you. And that's the thing. Like, when it comes to New Japan, like you were saying... I can't bash it. And the reason why I can't bash it is because I don't watch it. That's what, and what I like. That's, that's there's the hi there, there's highlight, highlights out there. Like when Nick Nemeth joined New Japan. Obviously, I know who Dolph Ziggler is. So, of course, I tuned in. I watched that entire segment on YouTube. Because that's a powerful thing that we have in 2024. And I was super impressed. And that's the thing. Like When it comes to something I don't watch... I'm not going to see the negatives. I'm going to see the positives because mm -hmm. if something is getting talked about around, it must be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Because if it's a bad thing, why am I going to waste my time watching it? Yeah. No, it was a very good thing. Like, And he ended up winning his first match over there, beating David Finley for the Global Championship. Hasn't defended the championship yet. I'm kind of confused by that. But he just I think he just defended against Tanahashi today. I got to look that up. 
But like uh, I've been a little behind on New Japan due to my schedule, as you know. Yeah. But like he he defended the title today. It came on earlier, but you know the ja the Japan time over there and American time is different. So their events are normally in the morning. They stream in the morning. They they go live in the morning. But that's the thing here. I will say though. Overall though, about Dose of Reality's take here, like I was saying, I wish we can shed more positivity to AEW because I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. I no. really don't think it is. And I no. think people, they overreact. Yes, I totally respect that everybody has an opinion, but if you can't say one good thing, then I really can't because you're technically being one-sided. No, for me, I'm the you. type of person where I love sitting there and having conversations. And I love sitting there and learning. And that's something why I think I'm so good at doing this is because like, I try to hear out my co-host on the show, whether it's you or if it's Ben. Because obviously we're not going to always agree on everything when it comes to professional wrestling. But that's what makes it fun as a fan. But there's things that I can take away from it and learn. And that's the thing that... If I can't do that with you, then I don't want to talk sports. I don't want to talk wrestling. I don't want to talk reality TV. I don't want to talk even Nickelodeon. <laughs> like, hip -hop, that's, hip -hop that's that's for you, hip hop, hip -hop man. But that's the thing. Like, yeah, this was a really good comment, I will say, and I love the time and effort that you put into this. These are the comments I love reading on this segment. But congratulations to at. You have a very long freaking username that I'm not going to say again on the comment of the week. If you want to get your comment featured on a future episode of the We Are Wrestling podcast, all you got to do is just leave a comment. So, with that being said, let's get into the We Are Wrestling weekly news and rumors. Starting things off, Drew McIntyre, somebody that we've been talking about has re-signed to a multi-year deal with the WWE. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, McIntyre is locked in for three years. What's your thoughts on WWE finally re-signing Drew McIntyre? And the news broke via Rock's Instagram with him giving him a sword. Drew, Joel Embiid, McIntyre? Do not ever, no, 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 no. Take that back right now. You are not going to compare Drew McIntyre to Joel Embiid. No. Uh. No, no, no. Not on my podcast. <laughs> no. Um, I hate Joel and B too, by the way, to the maniacs. <laughs> if you're a basketball fan, you know. No, no, no. Let me <laughs> let me let me get that over there. And then I thought he was gonna leave, but it's actually a good move. Considering that the storyline he's in right now is CM Punk too. I, I would I would re-sign him too. And McIntyre, he's hot as a heel right now. Just Very like hot. I said, just like I said with the nickname I gave him, but regardless of all of that. He's actually hot as a hit right now. And the CM Punk feud is really going. Until Punk gets 100%. Money. It's, it's really a money move right there. It's, it's really... The, the money is literally there. It's growing on the tree right across the street from Donnie's house. It's right there. You cannot miss it. It's a W. But that, let me let him, let me let him <laughs> So, it. with Drew McIntyre, I think we all knew that this was going to happen with him re-signing to WWE. Now that it's finally confirmed... I could probably speak for Ben here. <laughs> so happy that we don't have to talk about this whole contract thing anymore because this has been something that has been like on the high, like it's been like all over these wrestling news websites that we've had to cover it, but it's finally happened. And Drew McIntyre right now is having the best run in his career. And I just love what he's doing, especially with CM Punk. This is going to be a feud that is going to feed families when this happens. And right now, Drew McIntyre is very hot. And I think especially Triple H, he has seen the potential with him. Because if he didn't see it, he wouldn't have brought him back in 2018. If he wouldn't have seen it with that, that old geezer. If he wouldn't have seen it with that old geezer, then Drew would have been totally... D yeah. U N A. And that's the thing though with Drew McIntyre. He has won the WWE Championship. He's won the World Heavyweight Championship. The shortest reign, by the way. The shortest reign. Up to this date. But he still got that moment, which was cool. He was the face of the Thunderdome era. 
He has been such a fantastic addition to this new WWE, and I think that this is a great overall move, because right now, he is just on a whole nother level, and I hope that he actually does get a world championship title run at some point during this three years. I don't, I don't, I think he might be chasing the title for another year and a half. Probably his last year, he might get it, because I don't see Drew winning. I like him rather chasing the championship. The fact that he gets screwed in every story, I would take that over because he's a heel. He's a monster heel. He's and making certain, it work. And certain heel monsters in the past, like the Big Show, Kane, Mark Henry, even Undertaker, they've chased the title. It's better for guys like this to chase the title than to win it until it really is convenient that they deserve it now. Because guys like that chasing, even Shawn Michaels, guys chasing the title is a lot better than having it. Because it adds more depth and adversity to their characters too, in my opinion. Yeah, I no, Coles, I definitely have to agree with you on that. I don't that. know if my Coles would agree, but... I totally have to agree. That's a really good way of looking at it. Sometimes chasing the world title is a lot better than holding it. Plus, the schedules can it can affect certain people's personal lives, too. So, certain guys step up to be champion. So, now, Ricky, I do got to ask you, because you definitely made a valid point, though, about him, like, ch be sometimes chasing the title is better than being the champion. Yeah. And that's something I definitely have to agree with you on. I think that was a good take. It's better to chase the title. Like I'd rather chase, I'd rather storyline-wise, I'd rather get screwed out of the title than just to like lose cleanly in certain situations too. Even if I'm a heel, I'd rather get screwed by another guy. So now with Drew McIntyre re-signing with WWE, besides CM Punk, who else do you want to see him work with during this run? Um... I wouldn't mind him and Sheamus. They got a little something going on there. Got me interested in Sheamus. Um, Can't believe I'm saying that. It's, it's a passing of the torch for this one, but Braun Breaker. Ooh, Breaker and McIntyre. Yeah, and then um, even though it might not happen because I don't see this man going full out baby face like some people might see it, but a Drew McIntyre Gunther feud would be very good too. Yeah, we've already been there, I feel like. No, so, like like McIntyre. Now he's a different type of animal, though. This is a different oh, Drew McIntyre. With the, okay, with the more aggressive side. This is a okay. different Drew McIntyre. And That's Gunther, fair. Gunther is literally still Gunther. He could be a twiner, and McIntyre could be a heel. Because I don't see any babyface nature in Gunther at all. But him as a twiner could work. Drew would be a full-blown heel this time. And this is a different McIntyre. So I will say a couple people I want to see him feud with during this run. I wouldn't mind seeing him versus Roman Reigns, except this time Roman's going to get more of the positive reaction than him. So I wouldn't mind seeing McIntyre and Roman this time, except the rules are reversed. My, hold on, my question with that Roman one. Do you see the big dog returning or the tribal chief? No, tribal chief. Except this time it's going to be more positive light. Like, they're going to keep the same attitude that he has, except he's going to be more, like, anti -hero. cool with the fans. Yep, anti-hero, yes. Like Austin and Rock. Which is what they needed to do with him years ago. Another person I wouldn't mind seeing Drew McIntyre feud with, I wouldn't mind him being in, like, a cool program with, like, Ricochet. I think Ricochet could definitely, that'd be a great way to put him over. Ricochet. They could do something there. It, it, that rivalry would remind me of a... A uh, Drew Galloway and Will Ospreay several years ago. But Osprey was the heel and McIntyre, a.k.a. Galloway, was the face at that time. Because Osprey was like, he was a skinny and cowardly heel back then, back in um the Indies. Like, look it up later when you get the And chance. then last but not least, Trick Williams and Drew McIntyre. Oh, Trick. Nah, nah, it's too, it's too soon for Trick. Let, hey, we're it, talking about three years. Because oh. McIntyre's locked in right now for WWE for the next three years. I would love to see Trick versus McIntyre towards oh, the end of that contract right run. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, I thought you meant right now. I think now. that'd like, be a great way to put him over. I'm with that. Like, And if Drew uh, doesn't resign with the company after that, I got another side question. I'm, I know this is off top. Where do you see him signing after that? Ooh. I know, this, I know I caught you off guard with this one, but... I don't see him leaving WWE. I feel like he's going to end his career. There. Oh, you think he's going to be a WWE baby? I, I think so. That. He's a Triple H guy. I mean, Triple I'm... H is the one that brought him back to WWE in the first place with Black and Gold NXT. Oh, he did? He did. I thought that was... Oh, okay, okay. Nope, that okay. was a Triple H decision. Oh, okay. Because I heard some... Okay. okay. 
I, I say it the way you talk because about Triple it, H paid attention to what he was doing in Impact Wrestling and like over in like the UK scene because Triple see, H at that I, time was see, paying that's attention. That's what I like about Triple H too, man. Like he ain't gonna admit it to you on camera. But he'd be watching this wrestling stuff outside, man. He'd be watching it. I, I think Tri he admitted to that. Oh, he did? I think he did, yeah. Regardless, like, Triple H, I salute him because he'd be watching. He'd be out here actually scouting and watching. I'm, like, And that's why WWE right now is striving. Yeah. But moving on now to our next We Are Wrestling Weekly news and rumors. According to Fightful, the longest reigning NWA Women's World Champion... Camilla, Camille, is all elite. What's your thoughts on her joining AEW? As of right now, she hasn't made her debut yet, but there's it's already reported that she has signed the deal. Okay, um, I'm seeing a little bit of her work, but I'm going to put it like this. She's going to be in the Deanna Peraza situation. Like, she's going to be debuting. Her debut is going to be strong, but... She's not gonna be like, she's not gonna win the title because she's a she's gonna be in the championship scene one way or another. Whether it's quick or not, she's gonna be in that championship scene. I think after um, probably before All In, she might debut. Before All In, she might debut. I can see like double or nothing. Double or probably. Not, yeah, double, or no, double or nothing. She might come in, and she might go, go after Tony Storm's title quick. Not that quick, because Serena Dweeb, she's the challenger. To <laughs> Serena Dweeb. <laughs> I don't like that name, though. And I'm Deep. not being funny. I ain't disrespecting Deep. the name. That's her name. That's her name we are wrestling. So Serena Dweeb. That's her name. Dweeb, look, come look it on. Up. Even, even the, it's Dweeb. Even the host is saying it. The host Ser is saying Ser it. Serena Dweeb, not Dweeb. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah, St Storm retained, and um, she comes out, and literally that's another program right there. But, yeah, like, this is, this is the top tier female right here, ladies and gentlemen, like, her going to the women's champ, it's inedible. Rather, it's a week or after, it's inedible. She's going to be in the title scene. But she's going to be in a Deanna Perrazzo situation. And um, as much as it is, she might get lost in a shovel for a minute, but then they might turn her heel after that. Cer certain people turning heel is easier for them because now you know what to do with them or you know where they're going. I just don't like she's so talented. Yep. She was booked very, very strong in NWA. The longest reigning NWA women champion, ladies and gentlemen. That but, should tell you everything I need to know. But the big question that I have now as a fan, as a viewer, what can she do without getting a mega push like that? Is she going to be as good as she was? Because in NWA, they really set her up for success. AEW, on the other hand, they have a it's way a new, stronger division over there. It's a whole new territory over there. It's going to be hard at first, too, because like I said, Tony Storm is literally, that's her division right now. That really is her division. The TBS title, you already know Mercedes Monette got an undeserving title shot, so you already know that division is locked up. But the women's division right now is Tony Storm's division. Yep. And... Adding somebody else over there to a strong women's division, there, they're going to get lost in the show because Tony Storm, she's not going to lose anytime soon. I think what AEW needs to do here, and maybe this will happen, don't know yet because obviously this is fantasy booking here. Yep. I think they really need to create a strong women's faction. That's the only way I could see them bringing in Camilla. Or Camille, uh, I think that I I will. I apologize, guys, for mispronouncing her name. She's we so all talented. Get names wrong. We all get them wrong. Because I know even Megan Baines, who has a very similar physique with her, is also signed to AEW as well, and they haven't really used her. So I could see these two joining up with somebody that isn't being used right now and forming a faction, which they did do that with the Outcast, which didn't work out. But I think if they do it with the right people... It worked for Tony Storm's benefit, though. Because look at her now. It kind of worked for Tony Storm. Yeah, it did. It did. Them it turning her. on her, it actually worked for them. So. Yeah, but, weird, I'm just saying, weird things have yeah but there was bigger plans that they had for that. And mm. it didn't turn out the way they wanted it to. I just think that, like... It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Because I don't really see a direction for her. 
That's why I was kind of hoping that WWE was going to pick her up. She was going to go to NXT because I think she just fits the WWE mold a little bit better than AEW. I agree with you. I agree with that take. There, I haven't seen. And a- she's very talented, so I really hope that she doesn't get lost in the shuffle. I really hope that they do have plans for her, and this isn't just the oh, let's get her because WWE is interested. I hope that they actually do have something lined up for her. But we're just gonna have to. It's gonna wait be hard. See. Like I said, it's gonna be hard with that women's division over there because the TBS championship slot's full. Tony Storm literally owns the women's world title at the moment. Like. Nobody's the throne in that right now. But she's going to be a top contender because her coming in, like I said, she's going to have a Deanna Perozo push. And then gonna look like she's going to get a little loss again, too. But And I hope that's not it? the case. No, me neither. Deanna's already in a few with Thunder Rosa, low-key. I, so. wouldn't, I wouldn't mind um, Camilla, Camilla and Megan Baines forming with uh, Madison Rain. Isn't Madison Rain under an AEW contract? Yeah. Yep. I feel like that, that would be a pretty good pairing right there. Madison Rain and Because she around. deserves to be freaking used more. Mm-hmm. I but like I say. said, the women's division is kind of stacked, though. So. Mm-hmm. But and Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker haven't returned yet, neither. So. I know Britt Baker's just waiting, I think, for Jamie. But moving on now to our next weekly news and rumors. According to PW Insider, Eric Rollin has signed a new deal with WWE. What's your thoughts on them bringing back the Red Beard? Good move. A very good move. And like I said, Y6 is approaching us, ladies and gentlemen. So Y6 will be here. But Eric Rowan, come on, he's a big guy. Like they don't have they don't got a lot of big guys over there on WWE anymore, so and he fits the budget really well, so bringing him back is a very good move. As long as Y six gets started and he's involved too. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think the old like I think that if you're going to do this Wyatt Six thing, paying homage to Wyndham Rotunda and John Huber, I think you need to bring in Eric Rollin. You need to. The last OG Wyatt family member that's still alive. Oh, we don't lose Rollin. God forbid that. I'm sorry for saying that. But... No, really. Like I hope that we don't lose him. For some reason, because we're the thing, Bray Wyatt was sick or something like that, and we didn't know what was going on with Bray until we found out. Same thing with Luke Harper. I didn't know what was going on with him until it, it happened. These things just happen. Life just happens out of nowhere, though. Like these things can happen just like that, and we don't know nothing or their situation. Yeah, so, and that's the thing, man. I hope that another Wyatt one. We Six hope another is going to happen because mm-hmm. I think that having a big guy like Eric Rollin with Bo, who's Uncle Howdy, a smaller person, I think that's definitely a great fit. Yep. Yep. So I'm very excited to see what they do here, especially with Triple H's new era in WWE. Because obviously, Eric Rowland, he had a very successful run in the WWE under McMahon. So now it's going to be very interesting to see what Triple H can do. And I think that Rowland has lots of potential. Lots of potential to actually do something. So I do like this move a lot. Especially for the simple fact that Wyatt Six is coming. And he's, a, he's done some good work with Daniel Bryan, a.k.a. Bryan Danielson. He's done some good work there, too. Yeah, he so. had some great programs you give Danielson, him Danielson, Roman yeah. Reigns. You give him a role. It's like, it's like the NBA. Like He's a center. You tell him to defend in the middle, he's going to do that. He played his role every single time. You tell him to score, he's going to do that. He ain't the top guy on the team, but he he's plays do his, his role, role to every the best of his time. ability. Every single time. And can you hate that? Because I can't. I can't either. But moving on now to our next weekly news and rumors. According to Fightful, Scripps, formal, formerly known as Reggie during the Thunderdome era of WWE, has been informed that his NXT slash WWE contract will not be renewed in June. What's your thoughts on WWE not bringing back Scripps? Um, I didn't see it going nowhere, honestly. I didn't see it going nowhere. Reggie? I didn't see Reggie going nowhere really over there at WWE. Apart from that Nia Jax thing he did a few years ago, that's just about it. Reggie's good in the ring light. He can fly in the ring light. Got some moves, but... Very athletic. He's very athletic. Just like Leo Rush was. <laughs> but I don't see... um The man of the hour. But I don't see Reggie doing on AKA scripts. Whatever you call him, right? Bobby Lashley. 
I don't see I don't see Reggie doing much. I don't see him. I never seen him doing much, but like being that guy that's just the twenty four seven Hall of Famer. That's just about it. Like, <laughs> I thought the scripts a, thing had potential, but that stupid mask is what cost him. Well, like I don't see anything for him. if he goes to the Indies and reinvents himself. He did say that he does want to continue his wrestling career once his contract is up. Yeah, so uh, I would go to the Indies, reinvent myself. And maybe come back. Maybe he'll be better. But right now, I don't see a future for him over there. So, them not renewing his contract should tell you. It's just speaking volumes already. I think that he's very talented. He's one of those cases, just like the releases that we've gotten within the last year, two years. He's just one of those Vince McMahon guys. Yep. And every booker, every promoter, they have their own people that they push. And Triple H... Reggie's not one of them. That doesn't mean he's not talented. No. He's a very talented individual. He's very athletic with his high-flying movesets. And honestly, I could see him going to TNA and being a part of the X Division. And I think that, especially with his athleticism, that might be a perfect match. Yeah. I see him going to the X Division. Um, him and Rich Swan, That'd be a good match right there. Him and Mustafa Ali. Or him and uh, Mike Bailey. Like he got a few bangers under him, but he has to. I think he has to get better in the ring too. Like all that high flying is good. Hey, but, but like, we haven't seen him in the ring though. They haven't given him that opportunity mm, really. Yeah, but but no, you're right though. We do have to see a little bit more. We got to We got to see a little bit more because the high flying is not always going to be enough for me. He, th- but this is coming from an AJ Styles, Kenny Omega, Will Ospreay type of guy. Though, so, you mm-hmm. know, they started as high flyers, but they developed their game. But that's that. That's for another day. <laughs> but Reggie, I, I wish him the best whatever he does, though, too. I'm not no hater on him because I'm a fan of his work. I'm a fan of his Nia Jax storyline. I wish that was me, Dolph Ziggler voice, but, you know. <laughs> All right, well, moving on now to our next We Are Wrestling Weekly News and Rumors. This past weekend in New York City, Darby Allen got hit by a bus. What was your thoughts on that? Did you see did you see the post that he had on Instagram? I'm praying for Darby Allen right now. Like he's one of the co- well, not the cornerstones. Like he's one of those pillars. pillars. He's, he's a one pillar. of the pillars of AEW and I see people might call me crazy for this, even though you're I see Darby Allen as a future world champion. Definitely. A, a Jeff Hardy type of world champion on top of that. And then um Darby Allen as he's still young, he's got a lot left to do in AEW, man. Like he has a lot. And if, um, I feel like he's going to be an AEW for lifer. Yeah, me too. But um, I'm praying for Darby Allen too. Like, wish him a speedy recovery. Because AEW, I, I kind of like Darby Allen in AEW. His TNT championship runs, I like. His TNT championship runs were the best of me. Because he was defending that belt every week. And then he's Darby's a workhorse. He's an extreme guy. He's a Jeff Hardy guy. A high flyer. Man, Darby Allen does whatever you tell him to do in that ring, man. If I was a wrestler, I'd pick Darby Allen as my first AEW opponent. I'm not going to hold you. Oh, yeah. You could definitely do a lot of moves on him. But my thoughts on Darby Allen getting hit by a bus, I really do wish him nothing but the best. And it's just unfortunate. He's right now already dealing with basically a broken leg at this point. And it's crazy that it is such a Darby Allen thing for him to get hit by a bus. But it does seem like he's all right. He still and was able to go business. to his meet and greets. He was still able to enjoy himself out there. Yep. But, man, I'm really wishing him a speedy recovery. And he's got unfinished business. Because there's Jay White's telling stories here with that baseball bat every week. And who's the last one to hold that baseball bat before Darby? Sting, right? Yep. So there's, there's stories. Jay White's telling stories, ladies and gentlemen. He's literally waiting for Darby to come back. Because that baseball bat has got to go. It's got to go. Jay White, I love you and everything. But you shouldn't be no trios tag team gym either. That's a sidebar right there. (laughs) All right. Well, moving on now to our last We Are Wrestling weekly news and rumors. Goldberg. Goldberg making wrestling headlines again. Thinks AEW product is too cheesy. Tony Khan responded by saying that Bill wanted to work here. I met with Bill several times. Bill was looking to work here. 
it's funny because I had a bunch of really nice meetings with Bill and would have been honestly been interested in doing something. Since you brought this up, I have a lot of respect for Bill, but I was surprised by that because certainly that wasn't what he said to me when we were t when he was talking to me about maybe working here at some point, which I've always been open to and I really like Bill. It's all about timing and we're doing a lot of exciting things here right now. What's your thoughts on Goldberg's comments that he made? I mean, this is actually one of the only times I'll defend Tony Khan or his company. Because Goldberg, if he wanted to sign there, why are you? Why, why would you say comments like that? Because you want to go over there and, and work for them. You're calling them cheesy. Literally makes you a hypocrite on the low, man. Like, and it is confirmed that Goldberg has talked to AEW several times, though. These reports are not new. We've covered it in past episodes of the podcast. We know Goldberg was interested at some point. And and then um, hold up. This is coming from a guy that used to watch WCW and watch Goldberg's first match. Like Goldberg, a lot of us, me, I grew up as a fan of everything you did. Your undefeated streak and all of that. You were oh, he's a larger than life character. Yep, and you were literally apart from Sting, the franchise player in WCW, in my opinion. But you would say stuff like that about AEW, but want to work with them, is literally some fake stuff right there, man. Like, I literally looked up to you and a few others that people already know about, but you trashing AEW like that, but wanting to work with us, some fake stuff right there, man. Like, you got to decide, like, you going to be a fake guy like that, or are you really, like, like what are you really doing here? Because I'm truly confused at that. But to call the company cheesy, and you want to work for them, though, I'm... Like Here, said, here's confused. the thing that pisses me off about that comment, cheesy. It's cheesy, yet Sting had such a great final run in his professional wrestling career. Your buddy, Sting. I, I can't get my freaking mind across that. Nope. Especially with the way that AEW has pushed and treated their legends. They have treated their legends with the utmost respect. And for Goldberg to go out there and pretty much say, oh, AEW is too cheesy, because he probably sees all the people's comments right now, because obviously WWE's got more momentum than AEW, and it's the cool thing right now to hate on AEW. You're re you really just close the door. For an opportunity. You want to work with them like... You could have even done like a one-off at Wembley or just something. But here's my thing on the take too, like... I think you, he was just mad that no, AEW doing, probably wanted him to put over somebody. But that, 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 that's, and that's sad, Goldberg. Like, like I said... Nah, not that. We grew, up, we, grew, we grew up watching you, and you're going to bash a company like that? Arguably, just like he said, just because you don't want to put nobody over? Hey, I have a hot take right now. I think that if he did join AEW and did what Sting did, he probably would have a way better run than what WWE gave him during his shitty final run. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I wouldn't be mad at you. I because be I'll tell you that. right now, his run in WWE, it wasn't too cheesy. It was hot fucking garbage. Yep. And then and then on top of that, uh, I don't remember Goldberg losing the match over there except The Undertaker and Roman Reigns. Yeah, man. But the whole run was mid, and then Goldberg talking about nah, cheesy. No, Roman beat him, too. Oh, yeah. And then Goldberg talking about cheesy. All I see is a spear from you every single minute. Spear, jackhammer, literally. Like I said, I grew up on Goldberg. Don't take this personal, because I'm not throwing shots at Goldberg. But, but you talking about a company, talking about they cheesy, but want to go work, but that's some fake stuff to me, man. They don't talk about my company if you want to come work for me, man. You trying to make money off my back? Come on now. Be serious. I don't know. I just think that, like... I don't like that. He, Goldberg's one of my... He's one of my idols from childhood, but him saying that about AEW is it, crazy. It disappointed. It really did disappoint me. You're supposed to be a legend. Because, You're supposed to lead by example. And clearly, that's not a that's not a leadership Like, And that's right the thing there. about Goldberg. Like, I have respect for him. Ego oh, tripping. definitely ego tripping, definitely. And I've been a fan of his run as well. Even though he's not the best in-ring wrestler, his character was Everything, larger than yep. life, and it outweighed his performance in the ring. Yep. And then you're literally, you were literally like a robot Stone Cold Steve Austin. You literally jacked his style low-key. The bald look and everything, you were just stronger than Austin. I'll give you that, but come on, Goldberg. You're supposed to be a legend. 
You're supposed to be a leader in that locker room. You're supposed to be a leader on the social media. You're supposed to be an example for us as fans watching you. But you see, I don't blame Goldberg for going out making these stupid comments because you gotta put nobody, somebody over though. You gotta well, put somebody well, over. Nobody, nobody's been talking about him. He's been so irrelevant the last couple of years that he had to say this so that he could make headlines. Congratulations, Goldberg. You fucked yourself. No, nah, but like, you gotta put somebody over. Sting would have put somebody over. I thought the I thought the Buck Sting was gonna put the Bucks over in this last match, but the Bucks were like, no, no, no. No, 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 we're going to give you this He put Darby over. Put Darby over to, like, that's respect right there. The Sting didn't have to do that. He was like, yeah, the Bucks, y'all can have this. Yeah, but I think with Goldberg, it's just, maybe he's afraid that he's going to get exposed for his wrestling he yet been again. Expo- bro, like I said, he been exposed since that William Regal match years ago. Yeah, I know, but mm, it's just... I'm not taking shots, I'm a Goldberg but now, fan. But now I do want to talk about the positives of this, and... Can we get more responses like this, Tony Khan? This was probably the best response he could make. I just said that. I wasn't, about something. That's what, no, I just said that before you... That, that like, yo, that's and Tony the Khan best. deserves his flowers for that. And I think that, Tony Khan, this is what us AEW fans want you to continue being like. Yep. A true professional. You are the boss. You are the leaders. Lead by example. Instead of going on here, blasting Goldberg, giving him what he probably wanted you to do, you went out there and you were just very respectful. And that's the Tony Khan we like. (laughs) We need to get that Tony Khan more often. But up next... We have our main event topic. We'll be right back with more We Are Wrestling Podcast episode 106. What's up, everyone? This is Matthew Brutal, the king of bros. I just want to say, if you ain't listening to the We Are Wrestling Podcast, bro, you're missing out. The king listens, and you need to, too, bro. We're back, and our main event topic for... This week's episode of the We Are Wrestling Podcast. Last night, Wednesday on AEW Dynamite, we saw the Elite take over. And we got to see the return of Kenny, my God, Omega. And there's a lot to talk about with what we witnessed last night. What's your thoughts on this new era of AEW with the Elite invading? Even though we're only a couple weeks in, what's your thoughts on this so far? First off, I want to get to the Kenny Omega and Kajishka Okada situation first. I don't want them touching the ring together unless they are both 100%. AEW all in, Wembley Stadium, make it happen. I don't. Even after that, even if Kenny can't do that event, I don't care. Kenny, take as much time as oh, you need. Oh, but Ricky, man, come on. You know, watching Kenny Omega take those bumps in that ring, you know... He's back. They're just waiting for All In to have Okada versus Omega because they need something that's going to be a headliner to sell tickets for but that you gotta, show. But you got to also worry about health first. And if Kenny's situation is dire and more extreme than people are saying... if they're, But if here's the thing, though. Do you think Kenny Omega would actually fight in the ring if he wasn't comfortable enough doing it? I mean, maybe you wanted to test it out, too. Like Maybe you wanted to see where it would go because that's one thing about omega he does take his health very very serious so clearly i think that kenny omega did it for angle purposes and i think that he did a great job selling his stomach but like i said um but like i also said too like these two have to be at 100 percent for this i can't see no 95 percent or nothing less i'm sorry because i've watched their first four matches legendary by the way this one right here I don't think it will beat the first four, but it's literally, it's going to have more eyes on it because it's not in Japan no more. It's in AEW. With everybody watching, you're going to all see exactly what I've been preaching for years. Before I even met Donnie, I've been preaching this stuff for years. These guys literally done changed the wrestling world. Their last match, in my opinion, top five. and It's in my top five. They literally had match of the decade, in my opinion. This next one that they have it has to match up to that or even better a little bit because i can't take nothing less 
And I keep and Donnie like I tell him every time like if they're not a hundred percent, I do not want to see it happen. He's got different opinions on it, and I and no, I think he, I, I think I think the, these guys like I agree with what you're saying here. Like obviously, this is magic. If they if they've had classics, four classics, you're saying, of course I want to see these two at one hundred and fifty percent. But I'm saying is Kenny Omega is definitely. A hundred percent. If he went out there on dynamite and he friggin' actually took hits, but, but 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 also at the same time, because you remember Okada Danielson, right? Injuries can pop up during a match too at the same damn time. You do remember that Danielson hurt his arm, and I don't think that was the finish, but they got the match done. Like if something like that happens, and Omega and Okada, I'm gonna be devastated, bro. I'm telling you, because like I said. This I think match. with Kenny Omega, one thing that he definitely has to do during his run, and I believe myself and the Load Rager, we talked about this on like an older episode somewhere. It's been a long time, so I will refresh your minds. I will say this. Kenny Omega, he is such a draw already that I kind of miss the way he was presented in New Japan as a special attraction. The man was- he doesn't need to wrestle every week on Dynamite, on free television, we need to really protect him at all costs because mm-hmm. he already said if one, he gets one more bad injury, that's it. He's hanging up the boots, and he can avoid that by doing special attraction matches, more of a part-time in-ring run. Yeah, you know, and then you got, like I said, then you got Okada. Okada literally, he's had injuries similar to Omega in years. Okada... Almost 15 years has been consistent in that ring. Not one time has Okada had a bad match in Japan. And even when he's been injured, I've seen Okada adjust his ring style. That's why he wrestles the way he wrestles. People don't understand that. Okada wrestles with that slow pace because it works for him. Like, when he was younger, he used to have the pace up a little bit more. But, like, Mm -hmm. the older he got, he slowed his pace down a little bit more. Well, you see, well, that's one thing, man, in professional wrestling, though, when it comes to pace. People that control their pace and they go slower, it makes the matches, in my opinion, a lot better. Yep. Because I feel like a lot of wrestlers, they think that you have to hit the gas, no breaks, but like... Okada's a master of that, in my opinion. It's like. a marathon, not a race. Yep. Okada's a master, not in my opinion. Because he used to go fast with the matches, but as years went on, the older he got, and I've seen it in the ring... The wiser you get. He, he's adapted. like, And I think his experience kicks in too because he literally arguably barely makes the same mistakes in the ring twice. Mm-hmm. And then he's got arguably the best drop kick in the game in my opinion. That drop kick, he hits it like five times a match. But it's beautiful. It's like music to my ears. Every time I see that drop kick. Man. Music <sighs> to your ears. But this match right here, they have to be at 100%. I'm sorry. Apart from the story, the story's there. But you the know, story- but you know, Kenny Omega. I that's what what I want to know. Do you think Kenny Omega was a hundred percent on Dynamite this week? I I can't tell because like when I'm looking at the injury when he got hurt from Jack Perry, I'm thinking it was real. I'm like, oh snap! Because any little thing can happen in that mid ring, like I said, and that chair shot he took. It looked real to me, even though it didn't look real. That chair shot. Look, I'm paying attention to everything Omega does in that ring. Even if it's not real or real, I'm paying attention to every little thing. Because mm-hmm. if you want this match at all in, these guys, got they both got to be at 100%. And that's why I think it's good that they're putting Kenny Omega on the sidelines now to really further the storyline. Because we don't need this match to happen at Double or Nothing. We don't need it at Forbidden Door. We need to wait until AEW All In in front of 80,000 people. That's when we need to have this marquee match. And they got got some good chemistry in the ring. But now I do want to talk about the invasion angle because, man, I loved everything about Dynamite this past week. With Tony Khan starting off in his office at the Jacksonville in Jacksonville, <laughs> and then having the elite basically in the production room <laughs> taking over, and then they change the intro, and just having them throughout the show just being obnoxious, I loved every second of it, and then especially them v triggering Kenny, and then especially E-P. the whole stretcher thing, having Kenny get stretched out, 
And then I guess like online, they showed Perry attacking him on the stretcher. I thought that that was also a really good touch to it. And I just think that this has so much potential. So much potential. And I think AEW, we need to keep this momentum because this is what... And I'm not talking for all wrestling fans. I'm talking about the AEW fans that want this promotion to succeed. This is what we've been asking for. My this is. is exactly what we've been asking for. Like, there's, like, yes, the biggest storyline is the elite stuff, but now we also got Swerve and Christian, which I thought was great. Trent and Orange Cassidy, I think that has a lot of potential in there. So the storylines are starting to really become something in AEW, and I, I a, and they need that. I got a question for you, too. Like, this is new elite, right? Yep. Do you see Hangman joining them when he comes back? Yes, I do. Hangman will be joining the Elite, especially if they're already having Swerve talk shit about the Young Bucks. They're definitely going to have Hangman involved. and you think that'll add depth to it? You I can see Hangman winning the AEW World Championship, and that can I think he can actually have a really good run for once with the title. Because I him wanna... as a babyface, as a champion, didn't work. Like you were saying earlier about chasing the title, he was the perfect perfect person to take the chase the championship and then he got that moment and then right after that all that momentum went right down the toilet bowl mm -hmm. then um here's the thing so too. a heel hangman with the young bucks holding that championship could be something good here's the thing about um that too because um a lot of people wanted osprey to take the boat off of him but now and, like and that's where i want to get things interesting because i want Hangman Adam Page to take the title off of Swerve, maybe at All In or something. Then I would have Hangman go on this dominant run as champion. Young Bucks, like Okada, Perry helping him at all costs. People just are just fed up with it. And then Will Ospreay gets his moment and wins the championship. Oh, here's what I want down the line to hold that, on. That's a perfect, perfect story right there. Here's the thing I want down the line to when you talk about uh, Okada. Because, um,. I want to see an Okada and Osprey program in AEW too. And there's ways to do that because Will Osprey, he's going to continue to build up his resume. And then the Elite, they're probably going to have him go through Perry, have him go through Okada, and then he's going to work his way to getting to Hangman, which is the final boss in the situation. And then having him beat him maybe at All In the following year. Give Hangman a whole year with that championship. That would be a huge payoff for Osprey, especially in the UK. I don't see Hangman being champ for a year, though. May, may, may Dude, if depending. they could make this elite thing like the story of AEW, I could see it. What I, better person to give the championship no, can, to I than him? It. No, but I can see it because but, I see Perry probably getting the TNT title at some point or the international championship. Because I think the elite, they're all gonna have gold. At some point. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. And then Okada just had a, a classic with Pac at um, Dynasty. Was it was it a good match to you? I thought it was a great match. I think match. it was a good match. But Danielson and Osprey stole the show. Well, yeah. obviously. But overall, man, I think that this Elite thing has so much potential. And I would love for Hangman to join this new Elite because it would really make this thing... Very interesting. And then every little thing matters. The suits. The way they coming out to the ring. And I'm just saying, dude. Hangman as a face as champion didn't work. But now, Hangman as a heel as champion. That could work. I could see it. Imagine them. And then on top of that, imagine them. This is what he needs. Imagine them teaming up with um Don Callis low-key. I don't know, man. I don't think Don Callis will be involved at all with well, any of this. So. No. But He's I got like, his own thing. I like this version of the Elite. Um, I love this version. Yeah, I, I probably, uh, and I'm biased, it's probably better so far than the Kenny and the Young Bucks in Japan. Way man. better, man, I think. I'm like, don't get Don't get me wrong. Bullet, I'm Club, Bullet Club obviously is better than this. But that's, but that's why it didn't work, because the Elite and Bullet Club are two different things back then. But yeah, now, the Elite became bigger than the group. But now, right here, right now, it can work, because now the Elite all gloves off. And why not join the man that y'all have history with? Why not join the man that literally 
gave Omega one of the biggest L's of his life, the Rainmaker. Why not? That, 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 I love every single part of that. This is this is looking good. But here's another thing: Would you put that Continental title on the line, or just Ooh, who's better? Honestly, I would put that championship on the line. And I think Kenny Omega winning the title wouldn't be a bad thing. And then eventually Okada can win it back. Or somebody else can. Because I see Okada be... It's inedible to Okada is going to be world champion too. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. I think right now, if you are a day one AEW fan and you have not been interested in AEW, what they were doing towards the end of 2023... Don't bandwagon. I highly encourage you guys to check out an episode of Dynamite because this Wednesday, what an episode it was from start to finish. And I'm so happy I finally get to wear this AEW shirt. But if you're a bandwagon fan... Because I'm rooting for them to, to succeed. But if, you're a succeed. Band, but if you're a bandwagon fan or casual fan that's just sticking their necks in, don't bother. Hey, even, even Ben, I'm in a group chat with him and... He even saw what happened on AEW, and he was actually very impressed with the way things went. And he sees the potential with this whole Jack Perry thing. Oh, really? There, there's a lot of potential here, and I think a lot of people are starting to get interested. Is this going to beat WWE in in the ratings? No. no. But this is a step in the right direction. And that's the message I want to leave for everybody, is that we are in the right step. And AEW doesn't need to beat WWE. AEW just needs to be AEW because that's when they're at their A game. Mm-hmm. And man, I nothing but positive things I can say about this whole elite thing. I'm so invested. I was just shitting on Jack Perry when this footage came out during the All In thing. <laughs> I was shitting on him, and <clears throat> this man went out and he reinvented himself and. He really took something I said. I always say here on the podcast, and one thing I've always said was, in this business, if you want to be a fucking star, you have to be selfish. You have to be. And Jack Perry was in a horrible situation before what he did. And whether you like the decision or not, He turned himself into a star with this Cape Goat thing, went out to New Japan, made some some headlines, and now being a part of the elite. Imagine he didn't say that about Punk, made the whole real glass reference. Imagine he didn't do that. Where would he be right now in his AEW run? Probably still fighting for the FTW championship. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He can't do him that bad. He probably would be back with freaking... Luchasaurus, and they'd probably be doing jungle, the Jurassic Express. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, not with this version of Luchasaurus, though. Kill Sw- whatever you want to call him. I think him and Okay, kid- well, we would have gotten, like, Hollywood Jack Perry and him. And it just wouldn't be good. Him doing what he did, taking the ball, taking the brass ring in his hands, man, he went out there and he bet it on himself, and now he is... He looks so comfortable out there. Like, I've seen a huge improvement from... Because I I was at a Dynamite episode back in July with Jack Perry as Hollywood when he wrestled Hook. And I remember him trying to cut a promo afterwards, and he was just green. He just wasn't, like, nothing was clicking, wasn't there. But now, man, he's, like, one of the best. It's easier being a heel sometimes in the business. Yeah, but he was a heel during that time. No, but like when you're really comfortable, when you get the heat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's very comfortable. When you get the the heel heat, it's easy to say anything too at that point. Mm -hmm. I think being a heel is easier than being a face. Oh, definitely easier. Because the face, they're still going to boo the face. They're going to, they've been cheering heels more than faces lately. Like, and that's, that's hard because when the baby face tries to do the right thing and it's not resonating and then the heel. Is getting cheered off of the faces and stuff. That makes it hard to cheer for them too, though. You gotta love pro wrestling. But is there anything else, Ricky, before we close off this week's episode? Um, shout out to the We Are Wrestling supporters. Uh, shout out to my family. Shout out to JT. Because <laughs> you know he has his opinion sometimes. Um, shout out to the best one. Gotta get JT on the pod sometime. Yeah. 
Now you gotta, you gotta text him and let him, let him know that because he think I'm just I'll be saying certain things on the same and he thinks you don't be reaching out like he reaches out. But shout out to JT, shout out to the best one, Donnie, shout out to um, shout out to Uncle Ben, shout out to the We Are Wrestling Nation. Period, man. Like, try to get that thousand to ten thousand. Try to get that ten thousand to a hundred thousand. And let's try to get that a hundred thousand to one million, man. Like, let's just grow this brand, man. This brand is very legendary. When I stepped in, this brand is very legendary, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Like. I very am glad to be a part of it because I'm a professional wrestling fan just like everybody else at the end of the day. And I got a lot of knowledge, man. Like, probably not as much as certain people, but I got a lot of knowledge as a wrestling guy. I've been watching this since I was a shorty. Now I'm literally 30. So, And that's the thing I love about the team that we do have here with We Are Wrestling. We're all passionate pro wrestling fans like you. And that's why I love doing this podcast. This is why I love making content here. And we just have lots of awesome things coming out. Ricky, I do got to say, man, I appreciate having you here on the We Are Wrestling podcast the last couple weeks. Stepping in for Ben. He will be making his return next week. But we do want to let all the maniacs know before I do close this off that... Ricky and I, we do have some big plans ahead of us, which right now we can't make the announcement just yet, but there are things being worked on, and definitely you're not, you're, this is not the last you're going to see Ricky. He's always at the watch-alongs. There is some stuff that we are working on that he will be a part of. We're going to definitely be doing more podcasting together as well, outside of We Are Wrestling. But, Ricky, we do appreciate having you the last three weeks on here. It's been a blast. It's good to be here. It's good to be here, though. But to all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide, let us know in the comment section below your thoughts on all the things Ricky and I talked about on this week's episode. If you enjoyed this, make sure to smash that like button now if you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already and you're listening to this week's episode of the podcast wherever you listen to your shows. Give us a five-star review, not just any review, a best one review, and download the episodes. And give us a follow, really helps the algorithm. But if you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already over on the YouTube channel, highly recommend you guys to hit that subscribe button now, turn on the post notifications. Ben makes his return tomorrow for WWE Backlash. Yes, Ricky, this video will be out on Friday, and it will be coming out what tomorrow will be Saturday, kayfabe. But right now it is Wednesday, or this is Thursday as we're recording. Oh my god, my head is all over the place. The link's down in the description below. You can go follow Ricky and I over on our social medias and my other YouTube channel if you're in the toys and collect collectibles. I'm posting videos over there almost every single day. All the links down in the description below. But to all the best ones, and we are wrestling maniacs out there worldwide. We are taking over. Peace.